Did you coast through summer, enjoying life, going to barbecues, taking your family on vacation, and then all of a sudden realizing that it's almost October, fall is here, football is on the television, and you have not yet mounted your heater. So you quickly flip through your calendar, realize that it's really close to December, so you need to get out in your garage, get that heater mounted so you're ready for the cold. Welcome to the Kinsel Bros DIY. Today we're gonna to be mounting a Modine hot dog heater for the garage. This is a 45,000 BTU unit, and it's for our 24 by 24 garage slash shop. Now today we're going to be showing you how to mount it to the ceiling and also how to vent it outside horizontally out this wall right here. We will also show you how to hook up the thermostat and how to hook up the power as well. So with that said we're going to go over all the tools needed to complete this job. So right here on the table we have all the tools laid out for what we're going to need to use for doing this project along with some of the materials that we're using to do the ventilation. So we're going to need a sawzall to make a bigger cut for going outside of the garage. We need a circular saw. And then we have our venting right here. We have a double walled three inch, three foot piece that's gonna be going outside of the garage. Some extra three inch snap on venting if we need additional venting for inside the garage. Then we have our wall thimble, which is going to go on the inside and the outside of, on the siding and on the plywood. And then we have three separate elbows here so we can make the proper turns to get outside. Then we have our hole saw here to cut the hole to go outside. And then of course we have two different drills here. We have our impact drill and then our regular drill. A speed square for marking backing, a different bit. We need sheet metal screws to screw all of the ventilation together. We have Right here are our screws to be mounting it to the ceiling. We need some wire nuts for connecting the power, the aluminum foil tape to tape everything up so it's nice and airtight when we are done with that. And then of course we need a wire stripper to strip our wires to do the electrical work once we get to that point. So if I went over the tools and materials a little too fast in the video, I will leave a list in the description of all the tools and all the materials that we used to complete this project. Now the first thing we're going to do is raise up the heater to the position that we need to have it for mounting. Then we're gonna figure out what type of backing we will need and where we'll need it. So we have gotten the heater positioned to where we're going to mount it. Now we'll have to cut backing so we can connect that point there and then the point in the back. And we are putting it in this orientation because when you're mounting a heater, you want the main part of the heater blowing to the center of your garage, which would be about in between those garage doors. And right here we have our thermostat wire, which will come up over the top and be connected inside once we get to that point. And that's why also we have the GFI right there. That's what the heater will be plugged into for the power which was put in there ahead of time, knowing we were putting a heater in. For Modine's recommendations, the back of the fan needs to be at least 18 inches away from any combustible structures. So you wanna be at least 18 inches away from this wall or from this wall. So when you're doing this, make sure you give adequate space for the fan, for the motor, and on each side as well. So with all that said, we gotta cut two pieces of backing and then we're also going to take this 5 ace sheetrock, since we are not finishing the ceiling in this garage, we are gonna cut a piece of sheetrock the same size as the heater. We're gonna put that up first and then put the heater up. So now we have the backing in, we have to cut our piece of sheetrock. We use two by six lumber for the backing, get a little bit more beef and then we used the three inch standard Torx here to screw it to our rafters. We now have the sheetrock up above the heater and now we're going to mount it with these 14 gauge Torx with some washers. So we're gonna do that right now. Four points of contact.
We are now turning to drilling some pilot holes into the exhaust outtake right there. So we can attach our first elbow for the venting. So we are using a drill bit just slightly smaller than our sheet metal screws. And we're going to drill three separate holes. We're going to run two elbows and then another piece of regular straight snap together venting to get us up to go to the double wall to go outside. So you got the crimp side goes in with the smooth side. So you just kind of have to work it around. Push it up nice and tight. You want a decent slope on your venting going outside for condensation so you don't have anything coming you don't have any condensation coming back in causing a problem with your intake. So you want your heater to run good, you want it to run efficient. So just make sure that when you are doing this, when you're lining up your, your double walled pipe to go outside to give it a little bit of a slope, it doesn't have to be a lot, but just take a, a torpedo level or a two foot level, and just give it a little bit of a slope. And once you have that hole drilled, you will then have to drill a bigger hole for the diameter of this, the thimble. This goes on the inside and the outside. So this would be on the siding, and this goes on the plywood. And you, when, they, when they go together, they create kind of a heat shield inside your wall cavity. And then the three inch double wall passes right through here. So we're gonna start off by drilling a three inch hole We're making a five inch hole, actually five and a half. So we gotta be even bigger than this. Now that we got the hole drilled all the way through the structure, we gotta make it five and a half inches for the diameter of the thimble. So we took it, placed it on the wall, traced it so we can get the outside diameter. And now we're going to be cutting that diameter with a jigsaw. Then we'll have to do the same on the outside. And then we can put the thimble in and attach it and we'll go from there. So, if I did it, you're full of sawdust everyone. If I did it right, I could fit this right in there, like that. I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. The thimble on the outside, ready to go and ready to be fastened to the siding. We got her down to seven inches from the soffit, and then our double walled is probably gonna be just past the gutter once we put the rain cap on. This is our double wall that's going to go through the wall cavity and outside and this is the extra piece that we had gotten of three inch regular standard just clipped together tubing and we're going to feed it through So it looks like we got all of the venting ready to go. We had to use the full length of this piece that we bought. We're gonna screw this together and then we can put the rain cap on outside and then we can tape it all together, tape it all up. And then we can move on to wiring the power in and then wiring the thermostat. Since we're all done with the venting, these are pretty much the rest of the tools that we need to finish the remainder of the project. We need 
This is something that you can get at Menards or a Home Depot or a Lowe's. This is basically a pigtail that is a plug-in on one end that's going to plug into the wall and then this end is then you're going to wire in to your heater. Um, this is a six foot and then of course we need a wire stripper to do that along with the uh, wires on the thermostat wire and then we're going to tape everything up is the first thing we're going to do. Then we just need a couple wire nuts to wire nut everything together and we can plug it into the wall. So this foil tape can also be bought anywhere. Like I said, I will list all the tools and materials used in the description below if you need to go back and recheck. But what we're going to do is we're going to measure out our lengths before we actually tear it apart and peel off the backing. It tears very easily, so it peels off just like that, real simple. Don't let it get it stuck to itself. Otherwise, you will be quite screwed. We're going to start on the top. That way we can end on the top. You're going to try to want to make it look as clean as you can because it's all visible. So we'll just fast forward and we'll be done with this. Now we got to take the panel off right here to get to the electrical and the thermostat. On this model, it's two screws. And the door pops out this way. So here are our three wires. Our ground is the green, the common is the white, and the black is the hot. Here we are. Right here is all the hookups for the thermostat. It's hard to see. They are labeled on the opposite side here with yellow, green, white, red. You should be able to figure it out on your model or if you have the same model, they're lo it's located right here. Basically you strip the wire, you will just slip it inside there, tighten the screws, and that's all you got to do for the thermostat. So we're going to start off by running the pigtail. So we're going to make sure we're not hot before I plug this in and handle it. This is on a separate one. That's still hot. So we'll go with the top one, leaving the bottom one exposed. For anything else we might want, we're going to run the power through here. But I'm going to also staple it up above so it stays out of the way of all the ventilation. So then we have still plenty of room. Actually, I don't even think I will cut any off of it. Green to green. Twist them up as good as you can. Wire not as tight as you can. Give it, make a snug, make sure it's good. Make sure neither wire can be pulled out of there. Repeat the process. Very simple wiring. Should have power now. His gas line will come through here into there. Now I have to run the thermostat. Cut it. We need to strip it down. So with this thermostat, we only need the three wires. We need the red, the white, and the green. And they are going to go up right into these terminals. So first one is green. Into the second slot. Oh. Apologize for this. Really hard to see everyone. A lot of stuff going on in there. We got the whole circuit board to everything. Um, we only need the three, like I just said, the red, white, and the green. And then the other three that are right here with the thermostat that are not hooked up. We don't have to worry about taping them. We did not strip them because those wires aren't going to be wired at the thermostat either. So they won't have any power on either end for there to be any current running through them. So you don't have to do anything to them. Want to cover them up. So we should be done wiring in the thermostat, wiring in the power. So that completes this project. 
This has been hung, it's been vented, it's been wired. All we have left to do is get the gas hooked up, which is getting done this following week. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you need any answers for materials and what we used, all that will be down in the description as well. Feel free to drop a comment if you enjoyed the video or if you have a question about the video, any types of comments, we always comment back to everybody that takes the time out to drop a comment. So, also, since this is our first video on YouTube for this channel, it would be great if you hit that subscribe button and support us in the future because we've got many more projects coming up. And with that said, we will see you in the next one.